Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out a brushless tiny whooper. Now this has to be one of the first, if not the first, brushless tiny whoop style aircraft and I'm expecting to see a lot more of this type of thing. However, this isn't just a brushless tiny whoop style aircraft. What it is, is the Flex RC Pico X kit. And this is a 88 millimeter carbon fiber frame. And it is sort of a non-tiny whoop style aircraft. And then on Flex RC's website, you can buy all of these extras that can turn it into a tiny whoop or pretty much anything that you want. So here we have got 1104 6500 kV motors, very tiny motors there, with the Rotor X quad blades. In order to get these propellers so small you do have to cut them down, however, there is a new prop cutter for this which works fantastically and I will show you that in the build video. So yes, I'm doing a build video of this guy. Then for this stack here, so we have a very tiny stack. They call it the Pico Core on Flex RC's website. It's a tiny 4-in-1 ESC board that is 20 amp and runs BL Halley S. And then that is connected to a Pico BLX flight controller. So again, a tiny flight controller. This is a smaller size flight controller than you would expect on a 5-inch quadcopter for example, so it's a really, really light setup. This thing with the ducks and everything comes in at just 68 grams. Now I have a hexacopter with brushed motors that weighs the same as that, so very lightweight system here. And then, of course, like I was saying, you know, you just build the Pico X and then you can add all sorts of things. And on this particular one, I have added the tiny whoop style ducts. And these aren't just any ducts either. They are 3D printed, but they are flexible. So they aren't going to break in a crash. In fact, all of this material is flexible. I think they call it TPU. I could be wrong there. But anyway, I have connected at the top here. This is a TX03 camera. So I have just put some cable ties in there. Now Dimitri at Flex RC is working on a mount to fit this better for the TX03 and TX02 but just some cable ties there fits in no problem. So I have got the camera routed into the 5 volt out on the Pico board there and it is working fine so no problem with the regulation there and then I've also got a Lemon RX DSMX receiver in there as well. Now I have also fitted this two cell battery holder so yeah it's a two cell model list but it will of course take a three cell battery. I'm not sure these motors would take a four cell though. When I'm using these batteries here I have sourced them locally. It's called Giant Power. It's a 450 milliamp two cell battery and it says it's 35C there and that fits in here really nicely. It goes in really tight this and it suits this battery just perfectly. And then I have fitted a JST connector here. However, Dimitri at Flex RC sells these XT30s. I'm yet to convert to these. I don't have any batteries with these on at the moment, but these ones can have 30 amps going through them, so they are better, but I find that they fit a little bit loose on the battery, but there you go. So I'm using a JST connector here. But let's see what other configurations that you can have it in. So of course you can do away with the ducts. The ducts just fit in here. It's sort of like a universal fitting. We have some standoffs underneath here. So they also sell this carbon fiber plate here as well so you don't have the ducts on here and this is much lighter and then this uses some screws there and then that just attaches in the same way and there's also a bumper pack for that as well so that fits over the top and if you just want to get rid of the ducts here you have this cover here which covers up the flight controller and also the all-in-one ESC board and that just fits over the top there which is quite nice as well and if you don't like the camera up the top there they sell this guy 
so you can have the camera up the front and have a little bit of a lower profile so there is just so many different configurations so I guess this is if you want to use a bigger camera and VTX and we have more standoffs and stuff there all stuff that you can get on the website and configurations so check that out so I have spent the last couple of days building this guy and I'm going to do a build video so you guys can check that out and I have got this bound to my Tyrannus with a Orange RX receiver in it so I'm ready to do the Maiden so how about I take you along with me for the Maiden okay let's Maiden this guy I am in angle mode here it's armed and we have power it flies So actually pretty quiet. Let's see the punch. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad at all. You know, not bad for a 2S. So look at that 3D printed mount lighting up there in the dark. That's pretty cool. Now I know a lot of people are going to be saying that camera is going to get absolutely smashed in a crash. And you are completely correct, and I believe Dimitri is working on another mount for the camera. But of course I think the best option for that is to use a dipole antenna. Do I dare and do a flip? Absolutely. <laughs> no problem with this guy. little tricky in the dark but you can fly this one in acro which is great <laughs> very nice so do you know what this one seems pretty good and fast as well but I think it's gonna work well indoors as well fairly quiet doesn't seem like it's going to kill anyone. <laughs> now it's not got the most amount of punch than you would expect from say a 3 cell model. But you could stick a 3S on this if you wanted to. But I want to try this one indoors. So I think for indoors 2S is going to be ample. And this would not be a proper test if I didn't do any FPV so let's go and do that who needs daylight and decent weather when you've got one of these guys I have set up my tiny whoop course indoors and it did take me a little bit of getting used to because I have got a lot more power than I have with my brushed models and also the field of view on the camera is slightly wider as well than the other models that I have got so just trying to figure out how to thread the needle here and one thing I really liked about this straight away is it is really indoor friendly you can bash it into stuff and those protectors they don't break and they just flex they are fantastic and I crashed into the gates a couple of times and because we have that protection it didn't affect the way that the quadcopter was flying and I could continue to race around this course. You can see there that I hit that gate a little bit as well and I think some of the draft of the motors was causing a couple of the gates to move around. Of course a brush model doesn't usually cause that issue. Now I haven't fitted a buzzer to this model as of yet. You can fit a buzzer to it but I tried to be clever and fit one soldered directly to the flight controller and these ducts wouldn't fit over the top of that so I need to come up with another solution for that. However, I did find that you could fly this one until the battery ran out and the battery would still be above 3.2 volts. I guess it just can't fly any more than that with 3.2 volts per cell. So, really I don't need to add a voltage alarm I could do because the VBAT is connected up to the flight controller out of the box. But anyway, you will see that more in the build video. So there you go. You get about a 
four and a half minute flight time with this battery so I was pretty impressed with that. I'll leave you with some flying so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers. Thank you.